this is it. It's funny about honey. You always eat honey during a war. So much honey, there is no sugar. There never is sugar during a war. The first thing to disappear is sugar after that butter. But butter can always be had. But not sugar. No, not sugar. So, during a war, you always eat honey. Quantities of honey, really more honey than you used to eat sugar. And you find honey so much better than sugar, better in itself and better in applesauce. In all desserts, so much better.
anyway, the 19th century liked to cry, liked to try. I liked to eat, liked to pursue evolution, and liked war. War and peace, and peace and war, and no more. When I was then, I liked revolutions. I liked to eat. I liked to eat. I liked to cry. And not in real life, but in books. And in real life, there was nothing much to cry about. But in books, oh dear me. It was wonderful. There was so much to cry about. And then there was evolution. Evolution was all over my childhood. Walks abroad with an evolutionist and the world was full of evolution. Biological and botanical evolution. With music as a background for emotion. And books as reality. And a great deal of fresh air as a necessity. And a great deal of eating as an excitement and as an orgy. And now, well, just then, there was no war. No actual war anywhere. Did it really happen? Oh, yes, she said. It does happen. And it did happen. Well, so life goes on. We had just been reading Shakespeare's Richard III. And, and the things they say there do sound just like that. So why not? Anything is so, if a country makes it so, and a century makes it so, when it is so, just like that, just, just like, like that. that. Did it really happen? Oh, oh yes. yes, she said, it does happen. And, and it did happen. So, life goes on. We had just been reading Shakespeare's Richard III. And, and, and the things they say there do sound just like that. So why not? Anything is so. If the country makes it so, and the century makes it so, and it is so just like that. Just like that. History does repeat itself. I've often thought that that is the really soothing thing that history does. The one thing that is sure and certain is that history does not teach. That is to say, it always says, let it be a lesson to you. But is it? Not at all. Because circumstances always alter cases. And so, although history does repeat itself, it's only because the repetition is soothing that anyone believes it. Nobody wants to learn, either by their own or anybody else's experience. Nobody does. No. They say they do, but nobody does. Yes, nobody does. We had just been reading Shakespeare's Richard III, and and the things they say there do sound just like that. So why not? Anything is so. If the country makes it so, and the century makes it so, when it is so, just like that. Just like that. for the bombardments is not working anymore. 
I suppose it was worn out. As they say here, they have succeeded in putting it out of order. But who they are, nobody knows. And now the Germans are to warn us by trumpeting. But after all, does that really not wake one up if one is really asleep? So everybody prefers it. That is all everybody talks about is bombardments, and naturally nobody is pleased. And whether the aim is good or not is hotly discussed. They say they should not fly so high. They say they should not fly so high, though they do admit that the precision of hitting is very great. Nevertheless, they say if they flew lower, there would be less destruction round and about. And as defence is practically non-existent, why not fly lower? Others say they should not bombard at all and everyone will hate them. And they did love the Americans. But I say, you know how they are here. The French forget the past and enjoy the present. Yes, they answer, but our towns and all the dead. Oh dear, they say to me, can you not stop them? Alas, I say, I hate to have lovely places all smashed up and French people killed, but what can I do? Well, they say, anyhow, it is going on so long, so long, and sometimes we that were most optimistic are getting kind of pessimistic. It is going on so long.
course, there are a good many times when there is no war, just as there are a good many times when there is a war. To be sure, when there is a war, the years are longer. That is to say, the days are longer, the months are longer, the years are much longer, but the weeks are shorter. That is what makes a war. And when there is no war, well, just now, I cannot remember just how it is when there is no war. On the road, I met a woman, an oldish woman, and we were going the same way, and we talked as we walked. She said a little farther along, she had a house, but she did not live there. She had had a sister paralyzed for 35 years who had lived there, and she died two years ago. She now lived with her brother-in-law somewhere else. He was all she had, but of course, someone had to stay in the paternal house to take care of the children. Oh yes, I forgot. I had a basket on a leash, because on the road, as there is a cement works, there are many trucks. Of course, there are quite a number of automobiles, no German ones, French ones. The French always keep going somehow. Well, anyway, I said I had basket on a leash, because he having worms was a little nervous. He almost was run down by an automobile. So I told her, and I said, a dog is so easily killed. Yes, she said, we had one at the paternal house and he went blind, and so we had to have him killed. And I said, we had a little dog, we loved him very much. And he had to be killed because he had diabetes. And is he dead, she said. And I said, yes. And she said, well, it's different with chickens. She said, just the other day, a camion came along and he ran over one of our chickens. And he did not notice it. He just went out, but a little later on, another one came along. And he noticed it and he stopped and he got down and he gathered in the chicken and went on. Just then my nephew came out and saw him and as he went away he noticed the number. So a little later when the camion came back again my nephew stopped him and said you have to pay me for that chicken. That's not to say money. I do not want money. I want the chicken. And the man said not at all. I will pay you but I will not give you the chicken. And my nephew said he did not want payment. He wanted the chicken. And the man said he did not have it, which was probably a lie. But still, perhaps he'd already eaten it. Anyway, my nephew said, well, I will take the money. No, said the other, I am not paying you anything. Why not, said my nephew, because I'm not, said the driver. And my nephew said, well, supposing you give it to the Red Cross to make a package for a prisoner. Not at all, said the driver. And he drove away and said, I, what did your nephew do? I have no nephew, she said. I only have a niece. That is to say, I only have a father-in-law. That's not my house where I live. It belongs to my brother-in-law. And just then our roads parted and we said goodbye. Thank you.
To come back to Shakespeare, Shakespeare, which I read so much, mostly the plays about wars, English kings and wars often said that nothing was anything, that human beings had no meaning, that not anything had any meaning, and everything was just like that. And it did worry me, even when I was seven and eight. Not really worried me, but it was there, and then, well not then, but all the years I was grow up, it was not like that. And now, when here in France, when we all thought the young men were safe, they are now all taken away. Well, it is like that. Shakespeare was right, it is all just like that. And though Shakespeare was right, we all do hope again. After every war, there have only been two like that. But I don't think that just to say after war makes it feel as it does. No, I do mean after every war. It feels like that. After every war, when I talk and listen to all our army, it feels like that too. The things I like most are the names of all the states of the United States. They are music and they are poetry. You don't have to recite them all. But you just say any one, two, three, four, or five of them, and you will see they make music and they make poetry. from Iowa, and Iowa from Illinois, and Illinois from Ohio, and Mississippi from Louisiana, and Louisiana from Tennessee, and Tennessee from Kentucky, and the rest from all the rest. It would be most exciting, because each one of them does so completely differ from all the rest, including their neighbors. After all, anybody is as their land and air is. Anybody is as the sky is low or high. Anybody is as there is wind or no wind there. That is what makes people, makes their kind of looks, their kind of thinking, their subtlety and their stupidity, and their eating and their drinking and their language. Everything is dangerous and everybody casually meeting anybody talks to anybody and everybody tells everybody the history of their lives. They are always telling me and I am always telling them and so is everybody. That is the way it is when everything is dangerous. 
Life and death, and death and life. Life and death, and death and life. I like to listen to the Germans talking English on the radio. There was a funny one the other day. That is what makes it so extraordinary. Everybody listens to the radio. They listen all day long because almost everybody has one. And if not, there is their neighbors. And they listen to the voice from any country. And yet what they really believe is not what they hear, but the rumors in the town by word of mouth is always the most convincing. They do not believe the newspapers nor the radio, but they do believe what they tell each other, and that is natural enough. All official news is so deceiving, so why not believe rumors? That is reasonable enough. And so they do. They believe all the rumors, and even when they know they are not true, they believe them. At any rate, they have a chance of being true rumors, but official news has no chance of being true, none at all. Of course not. Everything is dangerous, and everybody casually meeting anybody talks to anybody, and everybody tells everybody the history of their lives. They are always telling me, and I am always telling them, and so is everybody. That is the way it is when everything is dangerous. Life and death, and death and life. Life and death, and death and life. Now they can do the radio in so many languages that nobody any longer dreams of a single language. And there should not any longer be dreams of conquest because the globe is all one. Anybody can hear everything and everybody can hear the same thing. So what is the use of conquering? And so the 19th century, 943, is slowly coming to an end. So they go on and all the radio stations interfere so that nobody can hear anyone. And in the midst of all the misery, it is not childish but very small boyish. It is strange the world today is not adult, has the mental development of a seven-year-old boy. Just about that, dear me. Anyway, it is evening and nearly midnight and I will be listening to the last news just before going to bed again. It is funny the way different nations begin their broadcasting. I wish I knew more languages so that I could know how each one of them does it. The English always begin with, this is London, or the BBC Home Service, or the Overseas Service. 
were always part of a pleasant home life, of supreme importance to any Englishman or any Englishwoman. The Americans say with poetry and fire, this is the voice of America. And then, with modesty and good neighborliness, as one of the United Nations, this is the voice of America speaking to you across the Atlantic. Then the Frenchmen, they say, Frenchmen speaking to Frenchmen, they always begin like that. And the Belgians are simple and direct, they just announce Radio Belge, and then the national anthem. And the French also say honor and country. And the Swiss so politely say, the studio of Geneva at the instant of the broadcasting station of Bern will give you the latest news. And Italy says, live Mussolini, live Italy. And they make a bird noise. And then they start. And Germany starts like this, Germany calling, Germany calling. In the last war, I said that the camouflage was the distinctive characteristic of each country. Each nation stamped itself upon its camouflage. But in this war, it is the heading of the broadcast that makes national life so complete and determined. It is that a nation is even stronger than the personality of any one. It certainly is. So nations must go on. They certainly must. Here we can see every night when the moon is bright. In the 19th century, there was nothing more exciting than climbing a high hill or a mountain and seeing the rain driving across a wide plain or valley with the sun following. Here we can see every night when the moon is bright. There was nothing more interesting in the 19th century than little by little realizing the detail of natural selection in insects, flowers and birds and butterflies and comparing things and animals and noticing protective coloring. Nothing more interesting. And this made the 19th century what it is, the white man's burden. The gradual domination of the globe as piece by piece it became known and became all of a piece and the hope of Esperanto or a universal language. In the 19th century, there was reading, there was evolution, there were war and anti-war, which were the same thing, and there was eating. Even now, I always resent when in a book they say they sat down to a hearty meal and they do not tell just what it was they ate. In the 19th century, they often did, and in these days, 1943, when eating, well, Actually, it is like prohibition. One is so certain that one is never going to eat again, that one is not greedy, but one does eat everything. Well, in these days, you would imagine that you would not take pleasure in what the characters in a novel ate when they did eat, but one does, enormously. Here we can see. Even when it is not, we cannot see them, but we hear them. They hum, and then from time to time they drop a light, and they give us all a very great deal of delight. And why? Because they are going to drop bombs on the Italians. Anybody can like an Italian, but just the same we can have a great deal of pleasure in hearing all these airplanes hum, and see them drop lights on their way to bomb Italians. Why, we all say, do they not give in? Not so exciting, perhaps, but more useful. Useful, that is, if you want to go and living in a country that has not been overwhelmed by destruction. Last night, just before the airplanes came, there was a complete eclipse of the moon. The shadow of the earth fell on the moon, none too soon, and then slowly it passed away. It was very nice, but none of the newspapers and none of the radios mentioned it. Eclipses are an amusement for peacetime, and yet all the same, said my neighbour, she's a countrywoman. It makes one think of all these worlds turning around and around. Yes, I said, it is more terrifying even than war. Yes, she said. And it was 12 o'clock at night and the moon was shining bright again. And we went to bed. And a little after we heard the airplanes humming. And we saw the lights dropping and then we shut out the moonlight. And then we were sleeping. All this is an introduction to the 19th century feeling about science. Stars are not really more than just what they look like. If they are, then are they really realer than war? It is just that that makes the 20th century. 
know what science teaches and whether it is or whether it is not what science teaches, since war is really and therefore it is what it is. That is, everybody gets to meet anybody, friends and enemies. We have them now, enemies in the house and in the barn, and it does not make any difference about the stars, and it does not make any difference about war. Only really it does make a difference about war, seeing the trains pass with the enemy on them. Yes, it does. But the stars, whether they are what they look like or what science teaches, does it make any difference? And anybody could answer that it does not. And so the world is medieval, just as medieval as it can be. Medieval means that life and place and the crops you plant and your wife and children all are uncertain. They can be driven away or taken away or burned away or left behind. That is what it is to be medieval. here, 1943, it is just like that. You take a train, you disappear, you move away, your house is gone, your children too, your crops are taken away. There is nothing to say. You are on the road. Where are they? If you go, there is nobody to say so. Anything can come and anything can go. And they can say yes and no. And they can say go. They never do say come. But yes, they do now. They say, come now, and they have to come. And they have to go. here can happen there and what can happen there can happen anywhere and it does beside it does it is disconcerting to know and it gives you a funny feeling that any time, not only that you can be told to go, and you go, but also that you can be taken. Nevertheless, you stay. And if you stay, you do not go away. That was true in medieval times too.
There are so many ends to stories these days, so many ends that it is not like it was. There is nothing to be curious about except small things, food and the weather. The funny part of it all is that relatively few people seem to go crazy, relatively few, even a little crazy, or even a little weird, relatively few. And those few, because they have nothing to do, that is to say, they have nothing to do, or they do not do anything that has anything to do with the war, only with food and cold and little things like that. Anybody can talk, and everybody does do that, even if they come in again or go out again, which they do, and then peace is upon us. And no one eats honey anymore. They find it too sweet and too cloying and too heavy. It was like this in the last war and it is like this in this war. Wars are like that. It is funny but wars are like that. sometime, and everyone is hoping it's going to be pretty soon now, there will be everything happening and nothing at all to do with war. It is the story that they all told last fall. They were talking, people in a position to know, and one of them said it was going to be over now, and they all said eagerly, how do you know? And he said, very easily, 
my wife has had enough of it. Yes, everybody had had enough of it. Everybody's wife and everybody's husband and everybody's mother and everybody's father and everybody's daughter and everybody's son. They all have had enough of it.